All right. Oh, hang on. Can you hear me back there? OK, cool. 3 o'clock, let's get going. Um, so welcome to MQA, The Truth Lies Somewhere in the Middle, uh, the final hour of the show. So thanks for coming, everybody. Um, so before we start, I thought I'd lighten up the mood a little bit in lighter news for what's going on. So hopefully some of you get the humor. Joke. Um, and this is a kind of a contentious topic. So I like to use a quote from, you know, one of my favorite people, Sergeant Holka. And we need to remember nobody's saving babies in hi-fi and nobody's killing puppies. So just so we set the tone. Um, so what this seminar is, it's a consumer-centric presentation of facts and findings. So on computer audio file, we have a real consumer-centric bent. We don't look at ourselves as ministers of information. Um, we look at what's best for the consumer is best for hi-fi and best for everybody. Because without consumers, this industry really isn't here. So that's kind of the angle that we take on everything. What the seminar isn't, it is not a deep technical exploration or takedown of MQA. Uh, I would probably fall asleep after the first minute, and most of the people here probably would, probably would. Some of you would understand it much more than I, but just so we know, we're not going to dive really deep into this, because uh, that's not, it's not my specialty, and it's kind of boring to me. So a couple of questions, kind of rhetorical. How do we get from this to that? So how do we go from straight wire with gain to lossy audio origami. Um, I mean, for the longest time, it's always straight wire with gain is what I want in my audio system. Um, and how do we go from high resolution 24192 plus to 13 bit MQA CDs? And how do we go from noise is the enemy to added noise that was not present in the recording studio? And how do we go from a free, flexible, and open format to a costly, restrictive, and proprietary format? Here's one of the ways we get there. Through the traditional hi-fi press. Nothing against them. I'm using their own words here. Better than high resolution. MQA revolutionizes digital audio. And what's behind this WTF moment? Um, let the revolution begin. So that's kind of how we get to, we don't need straight wire with gain. We don't need 24192. Noise, that's OK. Free, flexible, and open. We're willing to sacrifice. So that's one side of the continuum. Um, like all topics in life, there's a continuum from it's the greatest thing ever to it's the worst thing ever. So let's take a look at the other side. So as some of you may know, on Computer Audio File, we have some people who aren't fans of MQA. So things like this get them excited. And MQA losing money is a great day for them. So that's obviously the two bookends of this continuum. And while the numbers here may be true, the truth about this whole thing is somewhere in the middle. MQA is not this evil empire. Um, but I also don't believe it's the second coming of high resolution the birth of new digital, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. So I like to present people with information because that's what I like. So if you have more information, it just allows you to make choices. And whether after this you like MQA more or less, that's totally up to you. Um, I may give an opinion at the end. I can't remember if it's in my slides. But I'm trying to present information. So let's go over some of the MQ MQA claims. And I got these from the MQA website. Um, and a lot of these claims have been discussed ad nauseum online. But I get that most of you probably have real lives and don't read everything in the forums. So I thought, let's just go over some of these and give people information with which to make decisions. So. MQA developed from extensive research in audio and neuroscience. 
Sounds excellent. I'm in. Extensive research in audio, yes. Extensive research in neuroscience, sure. Just not human neuroscience. The neuroscience claims discussed in the AES paper were mostly tested with barn owls and mice. One paper out of seven papers cited addresses human hearing. Okay. Differences in hearing between the animals and humans, yes, I'm sure there are some, but just laying out some facts. MQA is lossless. So I got that logo from MQA, and MQA is not lossless. The MQA process discards bits that cannot be recovered. So it's not an archival format. The record labels will never take an MQA file, album, and say this is our crown jewel. Because some things are thrown out that can never be, that you never get them back. So whether or not that's a big deal, whether the gains of what we throw out and what we get are better, so who cares? That's not up to me. Um, so yes, once a lossless file is converted, it can never be converted back. Parts of MQA are lossless, but the whole thing is not lossless in the traditional sense that has always been used in audio. And again, that logo is straight from MQA. So MQA sets a new standard with maximum sound quality. And here's some other quotes I got directly from MQA. MQA sets the new standard for maximum sound quality. MQA authentically reproduces the sound of the studio master. Because MQA delivers the sound of the original performance, artists will be requesting it. MQA authentication. MQA guarantees delivery of the studio sound. I love it. I'm all in. But by definition, 99% of the recordings available in MQA can't be the sound of the studio because the MQA process changes the sound after the fact. So I don't know if anybody saw out on computer audio file, I kind of got into a fight with mastering engineer Brian Lucy. It didn't end well, but one of his points was the MQA recordings or the MQA albums released of the masters he created, he had no idea. He was not involved in the process. So think about it. There's an artist performance. It's recorded, it's mixed, it's mastered for a very specific sound. They work months on these things in the studio. The album is released. And now, decades, years later, there's an MQA process that changes that sound. Whether it's better or worse or the same, well, it can't be the same, it's changed. Whether it's better or worse is totally beside the point. It's different. It is not the sound of the studio. It is not what was produced and agreed upon by everybody involved in creating that piece of art. So it's a fact. In limited circumstances, yes, uh, everyone can be involved in the MQA process, but the reality for the vast majority is much different. So yes, there are albums out there, I'm assuming from start to finish, MQA. Excellent. So the sound of the studio, again, if you take a look at these, and this comes from an incredible article that Archie Mago produced for Computer Audio File. He is an incredibly smart person. There are people that are so much smarter than I am um, who are writing about this. And so if we want the sound of the studio, we should reproduce exactly what was in the studio and nothing more. And if you look here, everything to the right of that dip is not in the original recording. So whether or not that's the sound of the studio, I'll let you decide. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is Ken Forsyth from MQA. And he's the, one of the first guys I said, hey, this is what we're doing. Please show up. So uh, I know who he is. And I am quoting him as an authority. I am also quoting Mans Rolgard as an authority. I, there are several people who are authorities, and I don't feel the need to go into their credentials right now during the presentation. Well, I think that's a double standard. Everybody here understands Bob Stewart's credentials, or I think they do. 
I yes. think it's I think in transparency and fairness, you should tell us who he is and what he does. Okay, so here's here's how I work. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Here's how I work. This can be reproduced by anyone with the requisite skills. So no matter the credentials of the person who reproduced this. No, that's this, cool. I'd just like to know who he is and what his credentials are for producing this. I, it would just be interesting to know if this is a competitor looking to come up with something smarter, clever than what we have, or is this an individual, or is this just somebody clever with Photoshop? It's just a real, realistic question. It's a very realistic question. Thank you. And I will tell you, it is not a competitor. It is not somebody clever with Photoshop. Can you please just tell us who it is? No, no. I know who it, okay. okay, yeah, I, I don't want to say who it is because he's told me I don't want people to know who I am. Well, I think that's incredibly unfair that you're challenging MQA and in years of engineering, years of contribution to digital, and you're allowing him to hide behind a, behind a character. But it's cool, if that's kind of where you are, that's cool. Totally fine, totally fine. And, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> So I think I'm going to touch on what you're going to touch on. This was given to Bob Stewart and MQA. I asked, please write something about this. Please refute this. This has been out there for anybody to refute on Earth. So and whether what, or not and this Chris, what was Bob's response to you? Bob wanted a phone call with me. No, Bob sent you an email stating that on your site, you don't allow people to be anonymous if they're in the industry. Why wouldn't you just tell us who it is? We'd love to engage with him if we know who it is, and we'll be very transparent with him. Okay, but I so think here's, this is a huge double standard. For understood. A audio file. Call it a double standard. I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine. Okay, cool. And you're the, the reason, moderator, so continue to moderate. The reason that I allow somebody not to put their name behind this is because it's reproducible by anyone on earth with the skills to do it. So if this is wrong, I have said to anybody out there. Please show me how it's wrong, and I will happily make you the MQA hero. We will publish this front page. This is how it's wrong, everybody. The detractors have been wrong. Not that it's not possible to say it's wrong. Nobody has come forth, and I've asked for that. So that's where I will come back to you. So nobody's refuted, Chris? We'll, we'll, we'll come back to questions, OK? Let's just run through this. We'll get of a pretty critical debate on this subject. So <laughs> nobody's refuted it, but has anybody else supported it? Okay. That's the obvious okay. question. Okay. I accept that no ref nobody's refuted it. Has anybody else reproduced what he's reproduced? And I'm still going to ask you the same question again. Why won't you release his name? Because the same with any newspaper. If, if they have a source that gives them information, they say, we won't release your name. So if I come out with his name, I'm never going to get anything again from anybody who doesn't want their name. So why don't you just say it's an name. anonymous source? It's anonymous to a lot of people. It's not anonymous to me. It's not anonymous to other writers. No, but why don't you just call it what it is then? It's an anonymous source. It's not, it's not anonymous not Archimigo, to me. It's not Archimigo who has some high credentials. It's an anonymous source. Just be transparent. We've been totally transparent with the market. Our story hasn't changed. We stand yes, your story has we, changed, Ken. We, is we MQA behind? lossless? We stand behind everything we've said. No, you don't. You've changed your story. Okay. You started with MQA as lossless. When you got busted, you now remove that. You scraped your website of that. So let's stick to the facts. Okay, let's stick to the facts. Tell us who he is. Oh, hang on. Okay, so that is why I published this. So the, the one of Bruno Mars. That is from Archimago. The one in the upper left is from somebody completely different on YouTube. They were listening to Beyonce saying, wait a minute, why is there a big dip? And then they started looking into it. So that's from somebody else. So yes, this is reproducible by anybody. It has been reproduced. This is not made up. The thing is, I was reading that that shows up on some recordings and doesn't on other recordings for some reason. Okay. And it's the internet. <laughs> I'm sure, you, I'm sure you read it. I have no idea. OK. Yes. So let's move on. The sound can I, of the can studio. Can I just jump in on this? Because so far, and, and Chris, I think you're becoming, it's become very clear. You're not really interested in being transparent about the conversation. You're putting your own opinion on here. 
<clears throat> I'm Mike Jabbar. I'm the CEO of MQA. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for coming, Mike. <clears throat> March of 2016, you were given an exhaustive description of every one of the topics that you've already misrepresented on your slides, including it was well before that, that the MQA lost us. That's not even an MQA logo any longer. That is gone. Any longer. It was. It was. Correct. Years ago. We're talking about March of 16. Absolutely. Where you were told how all three elements of the MQA technology work. There's only one component of it that is lossless. Correct. Right? Absolutely. I'm glad that you've been reading what Bob's been sending you, but you don't appear to want to present it in these kind of forums. So it's really kind of a sham because we've documented what we do in MQA for a long time. If people want to present us with questions or concerns, anytime we see a test, we ask for the test parameters. We don't seem to have people that want to be transparent with us about how they created results, not unlike what you're presenting today. Right? So it's one thing to want to have an open, healthy conversation about what MQA is trying to do, which is actually try to further the convenience and the quality combination so that more consumers can enjoy a higher quality sound experience. But this kind of platform where you're actually trying to represent an objective end-to-end -end review of MQA and a spectrum is just a silly representation of your own opinions. So why aren't we showing Bob's answers to each one of those points on your slides? Why wouldn't you do that? Okay. We have an hour here, Mike. So you've chosen to spend that hour on things that are a little bit more provocative rather than fact-based. So I will give anybody a whole bunch of money if they can say this is not based on fact. I'm not referring to this slide because this is just a symptom of the broader problem. Even your opening slide is if wire to a 13-bit representation on a CD, yes. that's not a biased statement. In the document that you received from Bob in March of 16, it directly addresses the silly statements around 13 bits and 17 bits that were going around at that time in computer audio file. Completely exhaustively describes that. And okay. it provides our results as well. So. Bob is clearly on YouTube stating MQA, not CD, is between 15 and 17 bits. Are you saying he's lying there? Do you understand the context of those statements, what he's talking about in terms of MQA, CD? Oh, my God. <laughs> so okay. that's a no. I'll this take is not that going no. to be a discussion between me and you. I'm going to finish my slides. I see. Okay. Okay. And if there's factual inaccuracies, please let me know. You're choosing to... Okay. omit the response from MQA on every one of these points, okay. which is a basis so, for it. I'll briefly say that the responses that Bob has given, no industry expert has looked at those and said, those are honest and those answer the questions. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. Go talk to engineers who work for these audio companies. Ask them. I don't know if they will tell you, but they're all the, I, I won't go down that road. But OK, if it's biased, fine. That's fine. I, I cannot comment on that. I absolutely cannot comment on that. Let me continue the presentation, please. OK, MQA is not seeking to take over the industry by eliminating all other formats. So I have to go on what I see. If they, MQA says if you don't like it, don't buy it. MQA also sells this as it simplifies the workflow in one file that can fulfill all your delivery requirements. So I guess to me, that looks like we want MQA to be your one single file that everybody has. I don't know if this means they take the MQA file and then produce something else. Um, I don't know. And Chris, by the way, uh, you mentioned Brian Lucy before, so it, it's really okay for me to bring up that he is a mastering engineer. If it's one file, doesn't that take business away from Brian Lucy? So maybe that's a reason. Okay. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. I have no clue how that works. 
have no idea. Um, so. Okay, so device fingerprinting to remove issues with ADD converters. So this is cool. There's a very cool fairy tale story on the MQA website. This is actually very, very cool. A great story about the white glove process from MQA. The Telefunken MX it was fingerprinted, MX80 was fingerprinted, anomalies removed in restoration. It's very cool. It's several pages long. I encourage everybody to go out there and read it. If you like when I first heard about MQA, this is the piece that really made me the most interested, was you can go back and remove things that were problems. Doesn't that change the master? It absolutely, what, does it change the master? It definitely, I think it's cool, but it definitely is not the product that the band put out. So, I mean, facts, yes, it's changed, but I think this is cool. I think it's really cool. Um, so, but then there is another note on this that, so the original recording was 16-bit, 50.3497 kilohertz. MQA converted that to 24192 and then folded it down to a lossy 2448. That's how it's delivered. It's a very cool story how they figured out it was 50.3497 kilohertz. I thought it was delivered at 16-bit. Okay. Okay, understood. So the, the fingerprinting thing, um, yes, it's great. I just, I don't know how realistic it is. And, I, and when you look at the songs that are put together today, a lot of times are bits and pieces from different places, different times. Many tracks contain bits from MP3s or pieces pasted in from recordings using a multitude of different A to D converters. So that's kind of the other side of the continuum. There's the, the fairy tale recording of we're going in and we're going to take something that was not good and make it better. And the other side is, I guess, I don't know how you work, you, you fingerprint several A to Ds on a single recording. Um, so just kind of both sides of that continuum. Uh, Studio master quality using no more bandwidth than a CD file and high-res recordings delivered at 20% the size. So these are just a couple of things from MQA. Um, sound of the studio in a stream only 15% bigger than CD. Delivers studio master quality using no more bandwidth than a CD. Um, and then there's the 20% again. So 15, 20% or no more quality or no more bandwidth. And so, Let's see, size part two. The, so MQA is larger than Redbook CD files. Um, can deliver, typically, this is a quote from Bob, 15.85 bits up to 17 bits. Okay? Redbook CDs are 16 bits, 44.1. So MQA may use less bandwidth than 24.192 but MQA isn't 24192. If you take a non-MQA file and encode it at, say, 18 bits, which is more than MQA, and say 96 kilohertz, it's smaller than MQA. So to me, it appears that it's less efficient with compression. Thank you for uh, chiming in. Okay. Maybe your brain. Okay, so size part three. Do we need a lossy compression compression algorithm? Um, so the next generation of cord cutting is here, it's not cutting from cable, it's completely cutting. Um, 5G went live earlier this week. 
It's 300 megabits to one gigabit to people's homes for 50 to 75 bucks a month. Unlimited, no data cap, no throttling. Um, yes, this is to people's homes. This isn't to people's mobile devices. But where? Is it only going to be in cities over a million people? That would be a question to who's ever rolling it out. But so this, again, this is, this is just to people's homes. Over 10 gigs, yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> okay, that's, I. Understood, understood. So this is here now in a few cities, and so, they say by 2021, the number of 5G connections forecast 20 million to 100 million. Some estimates are much larger. I'm just saying, if, if this is the future, uh, do, we, do we need a lossy compression algorithm right now? I don't know. Isn't it also assuming like really perfect conditions? Let's say you're tidal and cobuzz and you're doing all this bandwidth at scale. I, I did big data for my day job. You really need you know, a, a lot of pipes, a lot of bandwidth. How, how do you know that at scale you don't need some kind of compression like MQA offers? Just because the fact that we can point to examples, for instance, that That's not the same as looking at it from an enterprise uh, viewpoint, you know, like I do with my company and like looking at something at scale. You know, there still could be operational challenges where some kind of compression would provide value, I think. Understood. can't be listening to high-res audio and my wife can't be doing grades at the same time in our house and we live in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey guys, the topic though about bandwidth is totally missing the point about why the music industry and all of the majors want a technology that lets them get a premium experience in the market. So anybody that was around during the early days of digital and the download days, that iTunes file as an example was upgraded three times with no improved economics to artists. And so services to be economically indifferent about giving you something better for equal cost, it priced down artists and their work every time that was done. So one of the reasons that the industry needs to be able to create a better experience even before everybody has big cheap pipes is because there has not been a story to the marketplace in a long time about the importance and value of music for mainstream consumers. And so I don't think anybody in this room denies that Moore's Law will We all at this event are the big echo chamber, but we don't move the market at all. It's really about getting something out there that the mainstream consumers can appreciate. Okay, so let's look at the other claim, no digital rights management. This one is so, um, like, wrong. so it's wrong that there's no digital rights management. You don't know where I'm going with this, Ken. So um, this one, there's an interesting presentation uh, by Christoph. Just let me let me go here. Okay, Thank you, Lee. So no digital digital rights management. So this is this is where um, 
I'm not telling you, yes, there's DRM in MQA. I'm not telling you that. Um, there was an interesting presentation by, I think it's Christoph Engman. that either Meridian or MQA or other companies hold, and your community makes presumptions about the application of those patents to our technology, which is Mike, absolutely Mike, false. Where have I mentioned those patents? Part of the conversation that's going on. Why would you put something up like that and say, I'm not suggesting that it's in there? It's not. We can tell you it's not. Okay, so there's a presentation out there by Christoph Engman, you've probably seen it, that says, yes, this is a DRM Trojan or whatever. I'm not saying that that's right. So it's it's out there. People are looking at that going, oh, MQA is DRM. Bob says it's not DRM. So let's take a look at that. So MQA worked with you to make I'm, I'm not saying that's DRM because Bob explained that one to me. And I don't think working with them to get cryptographic keys is DRM. Fine. But I'll say this. It appears based on people pulling apart MQA that they have the ability to, re to do further, re to, to restrict things. I will say that. that the ability is there, um, but how do I say this? Um, the file also has the ability to carry any type of blockchain message that you want, and it's not being implemented right now either. So this is so kind of like you know, the old Bill point? Clinton, what, what the meaning of is is. Um, so some people look at it and say, if I don't have full access to what I just bought without paying for more hardware, that that's DRM. And other people say, if I can freely copy this from here to there, then there's no DRM. So this, is it DRM or not, depends on what the meaning of is is for everybody. But honestly, if there's not a single example of MQA adding DRM, should we really obsess over this? Does, does it really matter? if? They're not doing it, the CEO says they're not doing it, Bob says they're not doing it, and there's no example that I've seen so far, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen anything where DRM's being applied. That makes me as a consumer, even someone who, granted, is very against DRM otherwise, Yep. that doesn't, you know, I don't lose any sleep over that. They started doing it, but I haven't seen an example yet, Chris. I, I haven't either, but I'm saying, there's a presentation out there saying, yes, this is a Trojan sneaking in DRM. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so Chris, that's what people are saying. Go to that presentation and say, there is no DRM, there won't be any DRM, this presentation is wrong. You are a big voice in this industry. I, Why don't I, you say that presentation? Because I can't say yes or no Chris, to any of these. These industry leaders, these guys are telling you here now, they're saying there won't be, and there's no example out there. So just say, just say no. Okay, I can't go to Christoph Engman and like say, no, there's no DRM. I don't know enough. So you don't believe these guys? No, that's one side of the continuum. MQA says there's no DRM. I haven't seen any DRM, but then it's, okay. I can tell you it depends on what the meaning of is is, right? Some people look at it and say it's DRM if I can't play back this file 100% on anything. It's a loose term. It's a very loose term. Do you disagree? Yeah, disagree. Okay. Okay. How would you define DRM, Derek? Because I can't. MQA yes, can. refutes it you by can saying. From the people here in this room telling you there is no DRM, there won't be any DRM, there's no examples of DRM. But don't be DRM well, in your VHS. It's you DRM. Can say don't be recording any device. I hear you. I hear you. I totally hear you. I totally, I totally get it. Okay, so pros and cons. I look at this like we must consider the pros and cons and are, and are who they're for or against. 
Um, must a pro for one entity be a con for someone else? Um, let's see. So this is fully opinion. Absolutely. It seems like the pros are for those collecting money and the cons are for the consumers. Fully opinion, but I'm totally cool with somebody coming up with an awesome invention and making money off of it. I am not anti making money off your inventions. No, no, I, this seems like it, let me keep, continue. So there's a ton of hardware turnover for manufacturers, manufacturers benefit. The selling another version of the same music again, record labels benefit. Better sounding music according to some, but at what cost? So I look at, so I talked to somebody last night, they were asking me what I'm gonna talk about, and they're like, but is some MQA recordings sound better? And I said, absolutely. I heard this Frank Sinatra, probably 2016 or 2015, and I've never heard anything better in my whole life. So as a pro, yes, that sounds awesome. MQA can sound incredibly awesome. Correct. And then, okay. And but then I should also address the other side too. I will not address the other side of that. Before, so, before you jump though, you have a point up there about reselling it again. Do you know what year it is and what the single biggest consumption channel is in the US? It's called streaming. It means you can actually update and upgrade that file as you find a better one. And the consumer actually doesn't have to pay again because it's covered by their subscription. So what is selling another version of same music yet again record labels? I mean, okay. if we're talking about the community that's either buying vinyl, well, guess what? We're not releasing vinyl MQAs at this point. As that will happen, product. for sure will happen. And if people are buying downloads, well, that's a market that MQA is involved in in Japan, and that's a... And MQA CDs. That's, that's totally there is, fine. There's no US-based MQA CD store or MQA download store. Even Onkyo's is not US-based? What's that? Onkyo is not US based. Okay, so let's remember again, nobody's saving babies, nobody's killing puppies. Please have a sense of humor with the next slide. The next slide is fully opinion. I believe the, the use of facts are quite presidential. <laughs> Conclusion. Um, so this is an opinion as well. I believe the hi-fi industry gave credibility to MQA, and, and we no longer matter. Understood. Which also has a relationship with MQA, which represents all independents. So, I don't think. Anything here in Hi-Fi matters for MQA anymore. It's in the hands of these corporations. So if Amazon tomorrow says we're going MQA, then we have it. So parting note, it's a, it's a photo that Bob took of me at CES while I was listening to MQA, and I believe it was Natalie Merchant, and I absolutely loved it. Photo credit, Bob Stewart. Um, Huh, what? Okay. Okay, so that's it. I, I tried, people didn't like it, that's obvious. So be it. I tried. So let's go to something less controversial, Brett Kavanaugh. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm out. Do you think that there is a need for a higher resolution 
streaming, I don't know if the word is service, device, whatever you want, so it's not straight MP3s, yes or no? I just... Well, j just something that is d doesn't take away from the sound. The question before, if, well, so there's some you know material being taken away. What does that do for us? And the thing, the real question is that it ha probably hasn't properly been researched in terms of what these frequencies are doing to our brain. If we're trying to basically, maybe you know, maybe there's stuff going on in terms of the sound. Recordings, you see that most recordings aren't u utilizing the full 24 bits. Most of them are well below 24 bits. The second thing is, I understand the technology, and Mike or Ken can correct me, there's really nothing being lost audibly. Sure, it might be fewer bits when measured in sort of a PCM paradigm, but in, with triangular coding, you're just you're removing stuff that's not audible, is the only thing that I, as I understand the technology works. If it's inaudible, do we care? At the end of the day, you know, well, what, 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 what is the argument against that, though? 